Welcome to Sunday Worship. So happy to join us. Let's begin by confessing our faith through the Apostles' Creed. Let's confess our faith together. Ready to begin? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right of God, the Father Almighty. From then shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's come before God together. And uh, let's really invite Him into our hearts right now. Uh, if there's anything that is distracting you, if you're not feeling like worshiping, it's okay. I want you to give that honest heart, your honest condition to the Lord right now. Say, God, I want to worship you, but I don't feel like it. I want to worship you, but there's so many distractions in my mind and my heart. God, please help me to get rid of these so that only you may remain and that I can focus on you and really soak in the blessings you have for me. Pray this prayer to me. Father, we want to experience you through this worship time. And a lot of times we get distracted and we don't feel like worshiping you. But Lord, that's what we need to pray, God. That's what we need to ask for your help to get rid of these distractions and give us a desire to worship you. Give us a desire, Lord. Give us a hunger and a thirst for you. As a deer really desires the water. And it finds, and when it finds that water, it finds, Lord, that satisfaction. Help us, God, to thirst after you, but also drink from
to the book of John. John chapter 10. We're going to read verses 10 to 15. John 10, 10 to 15. Let's read God's word together. Ready to begin? The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. 
I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, being with us and for guiding us. Uh, and we just ask, Father, that right now you may speak to our hearts and allow us uh, to open our hearts more and more to you, Lord, for you have amazing blessings planned for us today. So please, God, help us to accept those great gifts you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you could be any animal, uh, what animal would you be? Uh, maybe fly like an eagle or be uh, powerful like a lion or a tiger. I don't know which one you would choose, but I guarantee you, you would not choose the sheep. Although sheep are pretty cute, you'll never see sheep as the mascot of sports team. It's, you know, uh, Detroit Lions or, or the LA Lakers, the Clippers and all that thing. Um, not the New York sheep. You know, it sounds pretty bad, right? Um, although sheep are, once again, very cute, um, you don't see them at the circus either, right? People go to see the lions, the dancing elephants, the monkeys. Um, sheep, may be cute, but they have lots of negative qualities. For example, they get dirty. They get very scared. They often get easily lost and hurt. See, they're scared. They'll just run and run, but they're not smart enough to stop at the edge of the cliff. They'll just keep running and die. If a wolf comes, uh, another negative quality that they have is they have zero defense. They have no speed. No maneuverability, no defense, no horns, no nothing. A snake comes, they get bitten. Right? Another horrible quality of the sheep is that they're stubborn. That they don't learn from their mistakes. And even if you try to lead them, they'll just do their own thing. They're very stubborn. And you might stop and think, why are we talking about sheep right now? Well, the Bible tells us that we are like sheep. And at first you might think, the disrespect. How can you call me sheep? But when I look at myself, and I look at the things that I just listed, I see a lot of qualities that I share with the sheep. For example, my heart gets often dirty because of sin. I'm often fearful about the future and things I'm inexperienced with. I often get hurt easily by what people say. Even when I know certain actions will result in pain, like sheep, I still go over the cliff. Like sheep, I'm still stubborn. When Satan tempts me, I have no defense. Right? Even if I try to stop certain sins, I can't do it. I also get lost often. There are times where I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I just live day to day. How about you guys? When temptation comes, do you struggle? When you have the weight of the world on your shoulders, such as pressures and expectations, comparisons of others, approval of others, and maintaining relationships and maintaining a certain popularity and all that, do you struggle with fear and anxiety and certain things like that? Just like a sheep cannot live and survive on its own, just as a sheep needs a shepherd, God is telling us, you're like sheep. That means we need help too. We need a shepherd. Because we are like sheep. We need a shepherd. And the Bible says that there is a good shepherd. And his name is Jesus. Before we talk about the good shepherd, the Bible contrasts the good shepherd with bad shepherd. There are people who will be paid to watch the sheep. They're called the hired hand. They're going to say hired hand. And so the hired hand, the worker, will do his job. He'll watch the sheep, report what happens. But when a wolf comes, when a predator comes, what do you think the worker does? He runs away. If he sees a sheep getting eaten, what does he do? He runs even faster. It's an opportunity to run faster. Why does the 
work or just leave the sheep alone and run away because he's only there to get paid. He doesn't actually care about the sheep. He doesn't love the sheep. We also see another example of some evil. There's thieves and robbers right, that, that Jesus uses in, in the story. The thief hides and uses deception. The robber openly uses violence. But Jesus focuses more on the thieves and it says, the thief um, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. They quietly steal. They quietly lure the sheep. Right? And although the sheep should never follow the thief, the sheep is quietly, secretly taken. The sheep is lured away and eventually suffers death. This is a picture of us. Satan tempts us, and we think we're strong and independent, but in reality, we have no defense against him. Even when we know the thief is evil, even when we know when the sin is harmful, what happens? We get lured again. We fall into the temptation of the secret sins that promise a certain happiness, that leave us actually in deeper darkness and guilt. And so we need a good shepherd. And Jesus says he is a good shepherd that wants to give us life abundantly. Satan wants to kill, to steal, to destroy. But Jesus promises us an abundant life. Which one sounds better? Abundant life or steal, kill, destroy? Right. As our shepherd, how does Jesus give us an abundant life? Let's read verse 14 together. One, two, three. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Jesus knows us. He knows that we're all different. He knows we need help in different areas. He knows our personal struggles. He knows our pains and hurts. He knows the pressures we face. I think we struggle at times with our parents. Not because they don't love us. They love us a lot. More than you imagine. Trust me, me being a father, even just for a year and a half, nothing brings a smile to my mouth and my heart like Teddy does. Right? Not just that he's cute, but that he exists, that he's my son. Right? I love him so much. Our parents love us. It's just they don't know us very well. And we don't know our parents very well. Our cultures are so different. And some kids do have deep conversations with their parents, which is awesome. But a lot of times, we're not having these deep conversations. We're not getting to know each other. Because our parents are busy, understandably. And we have become so busy, not just with our school stuff, but with social media. We're constantly on our phones. We don't have that deep conversation with our parents, so we don't know each other. Right? We love each other, but we don't know each other. And that's why we fall into, you know, these temptations to hurt each other, to uh, disrespect each other, dishonor each other. But Jesus not only loves you, but he knows you. Do you know how awesome that is? He knows you. He knows exactly what you're going through. But not only does our good shepherd Jesus know us personally, even better than we know ourselves, he also leads us. He has a wonderful plan for each and every one of us. And when we put our trust in him, he leads us every step of the way. Many times we think we're alone and we have this huge um, burden on our shoulders because we feel like we have to do it alone. Sure, there's people to help us, but in the end, there's these pressures. We're like, oh, how am I going to get through this? Ah, oh. we forget that when we trust in Jesus as our good shepherd, we're never alone. In fact, he's leading us, even in, through uncertain territories. He knows. He will lead us. Not only does our good shepherd right, know us and lead us, the last thing we're going to share today is he protects us. I'm going to say, he protects us. He protects us. Remember we said the worker, the higher hand. Yes, he'll do the job. He'll watch the sheep. But when the predators come, 
What does he do? He runs for his life. But Jesus protects us. If a wolf comes, Jesus fights the wolf for us. If the thief comes, Jesus fights the thief for us. When, when temptation comes, we're not alone. He fights it with us. He will even lay down his life for his sheep. John 15, 13 says this, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. What makes a great friend, brothers and sisters? Someone popular that when you're with them, you feel good about yourself? Is that a good friend? Is a good friend someone you can enjoy good times with? Both of these sound pretty good, right? I think a good friend is someone who loves you, and so you share those good times, and, and they make you feel good, but also they're with you in the bad times. I think that's a good friend. They're good with you. They're with you through the good and the bad. It's unconditional. But what is Jesus saying here? He's an even better friend. He's not only with you through the good and the bad, he'll even die for you. And he did die for you on the cross. Is there a better shepherd than that? Is there a better person? See, we're in a desperate need of desperate help. We need help because we're like sheep. Is there a better shepherd than one who's defeated sin and death, who laid his life down for you? Is there a better shepherd? We see this also in Luke 15, where Jesus is eating with a tax collector, and we shared many times the tax collector was hated. Sinner of sinners, people thought. And there are other people eating with Jesus, who people consider sinners, worse sinners, Many people said, why is he eating with them? They're ridiculing Jesus, talking bad about him. And so Jesus told them a story. If you had 100 sheep and one ran away, wouldn't you leave the 99 and go find that one lost sheep? What did Jesus mean by that story? Jesus said, Jesus didn't come right, for people who already believe in God and, and have found the good shepherd. Jesus came for the lost, the people who are struggling, the people brokenhearted, the people who need a shepherd, who realize their need of a shepherd but have no help. He wants to be that shepherd. Of course he's going to go to the tax collectors. Of course he's going to go to the people, the brokenhearted, who realize they need help. We are all like sheep, brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not. You might think you're an eagle, right? But you're a sheep. You might think you're a lion. And I'm not lying. You're sheep. I'm not trying to disrespect you. I'm telling you as it is. We all are like sheep. I hope that we can admit that. I hope that we can admit our brokenness, our our, our need for help. And as Jesus is inviting us to follow him as our shepherd, will you follow? Will you follow? Will you say, yeah, I do need help. Yeah, I do need a savior. Yes, I do need a shepherd. Yes, I do struggle in the same ways that the sheep struggle. I am dirty. I do get lost easily. I do fear I am defenseless against temptation. I am stubborn as heck. I am broken. I get hurt easily. I need someone to love me, protect me. Who better than Jesus, who would lay down his life for us? I pray and I hope that you will accept Jesus' invitation. That you won't be like the people who point at Jesus and say, why are you with that sinner? And say, Jesus, I'm that sinner. I want to be with you. Right? Ask God for that humility to admit your brokenness. And I believe you're going to go on an amazing ride as Jesus, your guide, leading you to the best, your quiet pastures, Green, uh, quiet waters, green pastures. It's going to be awesome. Why don't you give it a chance?
Why don't you open your heart to him? You won't disappoint him. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. And as much as we don't want to admit it, we are like sheep. I am like a sheep. And we need help. Because we get lost easily. We fear. We get hurt easily. We're stubborn. We're defenseless against attacks. And so on and so forth. We get so good. We need your help, God. So as you invite us to follow you as our shepherd, help us to accept that invitation. To see how much you love us, how much you care for us. That you're not a hired hand that just watches us and, and leaves when times get bad. But you're the one who fends off our enemies. You're the one who strengthens us when we're weak. You're the one who will even lay down your life for us. May we put our trust in you as our shepherd, as our good shepherd. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. And uh, we've been having more and more students come for our in-person worship. And we have still a lot of seats, a lot of safe um, in, in this wonderful time at worship. So please, brothers and sisters, please join us um, at 11 a.m. B1. If you cannot join us, our videos like this will continue to be uploaded. So don't worry about that. And a special announcement, um, next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, uh, we'll have a sports day okay, where we'll, we'll play some volleyball, some basketball, some dodgeball, and we have some prizes, some food. Um, if you need a ride, let me know. And we recently renovated our, our church outside in our, um, our basketball court. The floor, newly painted, looks nice, volleyball court. So um, to you know, celebrate that and, and all that, we wanted to invite you guys. So please come out. Um, if you guys can have, keep your masks on. Uh, we still want to be safe, but we also want to have fun together. So please join us um, on Saturday, uh, May 30th, from 3 to 8. Okay. All right. Uh, once again, our Saturday uh, Bible studies are at 8 p.m., uh, but this week uh, will not. This, this coming week, we'll not have it. I just wanted to remind you that we'll continue to have it, and it'll be next week. Okay. Let's finish with the Lord's Prayer, and uh, we'll finish our worship. Let's pray this prayer together. Ready to begin? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Have a wonderful week. I hope to see you guys this Saturday and Sunday. All right, take care.